Shumai, Borida, good evening. Welcome to Tone Twins TV. Hi there, I'm Hugh. I'm Ed. And this is the first in a series of uh, videos we're going to be doing about the restoration of Chris Buck's soon to be world famous <laughs> 1962 Stratocaster. Amazing. It's quite a story behind it, actually, isn't it? Well, you were in on it before I was. Yeah, um, Chris contacted me and said he'd sort of found what he believed to be a picture of a, an old Strat in a local auction um, in South auctions. Wales yeah yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah it's a place called Pontypridd auctions which is which is essentially like a house clearance place isn't it yeah I mean as the story progresses we'll get into it but they it was everything from old books and old shoes and old clothes and chairs and tables and and, yeah. and a 62 strat yeah but it, was, it wasn't just the 62 strat was it because in amongst you know all this this house junk basically was a three like vin two vin vintage Vox, Vox cabs, amps, yeah. uh, a, a beige AC30 head that had been converted into yeah. well a combo that had been converted into yeah, a head yeah, yeah. Uh, with a copper top and there was a couple of vintage tape echoes as well so as soon as I saw what was in the, in the auction what the in inventory was I figured well obviously some old <laughs> shadows guy is has sadly passed away and yeah. and they've obviously cleared his house and this does, vintage strap yeah. was part and parcel certainly of seems it. to be the way and chris sort of got in touch asking for a bit of help about authenticating the guitar from these what were very blurry pictures someone had taken a, a video of well it wasn't stock it, it was picture there was one picture yes, that's right and and mm. i mean fair play to chris i mean i'm sure he won't mind me saying it but he's 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 he loves vintage guitars and he understands the the significance of them and everything but he's not a vintage guitar Nerd. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say expert, yeah. but yeah, he's he's not a nerd like about us. it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So so basically, he just needed a little bit of help. So mm -hmm. you know, you couldn't make it, could you? So. Yeah, I was uh, babysitting the next day, so um, you luckily could pop along and help. Yeah, him out, I, I messaged Chris in the evening. And I said, look, if you want me to come up and give you a hand and check it over with you, that would be great. So uh, we found ourselves <laughs> standing up outside this auction house and freezing weather just before Christmas of uh, uh, 2019 and going in and looking at well it was this vintage strat that was just like in the most derelict vintage strat I've ever seen in a cardboard box in in this auction house and it was it was in quite a state really wasn't it it's kind of the things nowadays you assume with the internet and eBay reverb and so on that you know these pawn shop finds and stuff as people don't happen anymore. But well, this what this this was like the this, proverbial pawn yeah, shop fight. Completely. Really, and it was kind of meant to be, I think. I mean, a player of Chris's yeah. quality from the South Wales area, South Wales Valleys, for this guitar to have been in the valleys probably for the last thirty years or so. Or um, longer, I would you imagine, know, yeah. And it's found its way and somebody passed on a message to him and he's seen it. Anyway. Yeah. So I mean fortunately when we were in, in actually in the auction auction house they had a guy there to actually to take well the strings <laughs> what strings were left on there they had like three uh, strings left yeah there, something, something like that so you know, he, he took those off yeah, yeah. and we lifted the pit guard off yeah. and we could see what was underneath and you'll see some pictures of that fairly soon and it's it's terrifying chris you know chris and i went outside and had a little private conversation and we kind of figured out I gave him a rough idea of, of what work was needed and, and how much it was going to cost him and, and Chris had his budget and how much he was going to spend and and in we went and the auction started and and luckily from what I hear you didn't bid on the item before which was <laughs> yeah, the item before was was a set of plastic shower curtains which fetched uh, uh, an impressive four pounds fifty. Guess did I missed out on those? Never mind. Next time. <laughs> Next time. Vintage shower curtains. So uh, yeah, Chris. A very shell shocked Chris Buck at the, at the end of this auction. I just bought his first vintage guitar without ever having op the opportunity to play it because it was completely unplayable yeah. and just in the hope that we could actually turn it into something. So, bringing it back to Tone Twins TV, what are we hoping to do to help him out? Well, yeah, well, you know, one of my other hats uh, is, is actually restoring and rebuilding vintage guitars and amplifiers which I do for a lot of private clients and I was really flattered that Chris just immediately said you know I want you to have it I want you to do to do the job for me so um, I've been restoring it for the last couple of months really uh, it's still not finished and uh, 
But what I've done is, in the process of restoring it, is I've taken video footage to show you guys on, on our channel here. And um, we're going to take it step by step, just, you know, video every week if possible, uh, just detailing the process uh, and giving some, some insights and a lot of technical information. And uh, hopefully you'll find it interesting and subscribe and, you know, uh, be kept up to date with uh, each uh, episode as it comes out. Yeah, please do. As you said, subscribe really helps us. Um, we've had some comments asking about t-shirts and stuff. Hopefully we'll have some of those available at some time in the future yeah, as well. Exactly. Um, but keep your eyes peeled on future episodes for more information about those. Yeah. So what are we going to look at in this episode? Yeah, so basically I'm going to try and uh, strip everything off the pit guards, uh, assess what's original and what isn't and most importantly i want to get the pickups out of there and see exactly what we've got whether they are vintage pickups Good job. and yeah. uh indeed try and assess whether they they might actually still be working because there's no guarantees on that so there'll be yeah. some helpful info about identifying vintage pickups and things like oh, that oh sure sure brilliant sure. okay so i flipped the uh pick guard it wasn't easy actually these uh these three switches were wedged into these, uh, um, I guess you could call them routes. Uh, I snipped off all the wires because none of this is uh, going to be reused. Uh, we're going to try and make this uh, look as original as possible. Um, okay, we can see really clearly now that we've got probably a late 70s, I would imagine, uh, grey bottom pick up in the in the neck position and these two look original um, they daisy chained the negative contacts of these pickups together with a single strand of wire and ran it down to the volume part uh, and you can also see that uh, this one here uh, the negative is on this side whereas on the two vintage pickups the negative was on the other side so this would have been originally out of phase i guess when they wired it so uh, that would have been corrected by swapping over the wires. Um, what's happening on the switch is absolutely beyond me. There's, there are three um, what we call mustard capacitors, uh, which you often see in early Vox and Marshall amplifiers. And they, they tend to be quite robust. They're often in perfect working condition. So I dare say Chris could sell these on Reverb or eBay or something if... Uh, if he chose to do so, because um, they could probably carry on working quite happily in a really nice guitar amplifier. Uh, yeah, these two parts look to be original. Um, we'll know for sure when uh, the solder is cleaned off the outside of the casings. I have absolutely no idea what on earth this circuit was supposed to do. If anybody can provide some insight into that, uh, we'd be fascinated to know. Uh, maybe it was some kind of common mod in the 60s or 70s, who knows. Uh, the other thing I've done is I've managed to, well, this just, this potentiometer was wedged into this hole like that, and it just lifted straight out. Um, nice uh, <laughs> hole straight through the middle of a pre-CBS vendor body, fair enough. Uh, this was made in the UK. There's a England stamp on the casing of the pot. So uh, yeah, this happened obviously quite a bit later in the guitar's life. Anyway, let's have a look at these pickups. If we pull out this one first. Okay, that's kind of exactly what I want to see. This is, uh, if you notice the slightly purpley look of the magnet wire on the coil uh, that's telltale sign of uh, plain enamel which is what you'd expect to see on a 70 strap pickup um, flat uh, pole pieces quite shiny looking really um, doesn't look like this pickup saw a lot of use but then again i don't think this guitar saw an awful lot of use from maybe the late 70s early 80s onwards so um, yeah that's in great looking condition so, have a look at the middle pickup here. Okay, Ooh, that's nice. Uh, absolutely filthy around the pole pieces, just kind of, you see the dirt kind of cakes up um, 
around the the edge of the uh, pole piece as it, as it meets the uh, top um, fiber board. You can see the, the marks in the magnets, uh, which is what you want to see. Slight beveling on the edges uh, and this very coppery looking uh, magnet wire, which would suggest formal form bar wire, uh, which Fender used in the early 60s. And it's a kind of residue of black waxy stuff. This looks like uh, it's never been touched really, apart from the uh, change of wire. Let's hope um, that reads okay on the DC meter. <laughs> And this last one, yeah, pretty much the same, really. Uh, I don't know. It's um, the coil looks a lot flatter on the sides. There's a kind of a a little curve on the edge there, and this one is absolutely flat. I mean, it's obviously been on this pickup for a very, very long time. Uh, and there's that kind of black waxy stuff as well. Uh, could be original, could be not. It's it's actually, it's wound almost to the edge of the top flat. So it's, it looks, looks like there's a ton more windings on this than on this pickup. I'm thinking this might be a rewind, but a very, very old one if it is. So, if we measure the resistance of these two, uh, I guess we'll find out more. But I'm going to guess that this one, if it's still working, is wound a lot hotter than this one. So, what are we going to do next? Uh, the plan, I guess, is to try and clean this up as much as possible that we've got two pieces of original wire surviving and I'm going to make every effort I can to, to reuse these. Um, the pots will need to be cleaned up. Uh, we're going to need to take away the switch and all the capacitors and all the weird bits going on. There's actually a resistor under here as well with the looks of things. And Chris is a guy who uses the in-between positions as well as the three main pickup settings, individual pickup settings. So although this switch would appear to be the original three-way switch, for Chris's purposes, it's not going to be particularly useful. So uh, this is going to be swapped out for a modern switch and this will be restored and kept for posterity should Chris ever decide to and put it back to original. Well, one thing I really want to do is get this uh, pick guard back on the guitar really as quickly as possible. And to make this easy, I'm just going to snip off these excess wires. The reason I want to get it back on the guitar uh, is simply that nitrate is notorious for shrinking celluloid nitrate. So, I mean, this one may have already done all the shrinking it's ever going to do, but it's where you tend to see this, uh, it's just rock solid rubber spaces there, just gone completely solid and just uh, disintegrating basically. Uh, the reason the screws in these uh, vintage pit guards are often at an angle is that the pit guards are pulling in and just basically pulling the uh, the uh, pit guard screws over inside the hole, just kind of making them um, run at a, certain, at a slight angle. So although this has probably done all the shrinking it's ever gonna do, um, I'm still gonna screw this straight back down and ensure that nothing untoward happens to it while the guitar is being restored. Okay, so it's time to try and start getting some bits and pieces off this uh, this pick guard. I think the pickup covers will be pretty much wedged in and I will want to do something about that because I think uh, vintage pickups in particular are very very sensitive to 
to height settings. Okay, that's better than expected. Uh, very sensitive to height settings. And for optimizing tone, I think you need a little bit of uh, ability to move things around. Okay. That's looking good. Yeah, that all looks really, really nice. Some kind of weird stuff going on on the edge there. Weird, looks like kind of leftover, kind of wasn't trimmed on the edge. I've not really seen that before, but you never, you never know with old Fender stuff. Okay, and there we go. Rock solid spacers. Ooh, there you go. Keep that safe. This one's just falling apart as I'm taking it off. Yeah, okay, so three very nice covers there. Which will be cleaned up eventually. Right, I wanna keep these stickers somewhere. I don't know where to keep them, but I wanna keep them somewhere just because they're part of the guitar's history. And uh, well, don't want to leave it on the guitar, but uh, we'll have to find something to stick it on to. These knobs are very, very tightly pressed down. I'll try and get a little spoon underneath here. I'm going to need something quite sharp, I think, to pull these. Certainly do not want to damage them. Okay, we'll come back to that. Right, let's pull all this nonsense out. Okay, there you go, that's coming off nicely. Looks like that hole was enlarged um, to fit this in, but uh, that shouldn't be too much of a problem if we end up having to use oversized washers. What the heck? Right, okay. I'm just gonna take this out as a single piece and clean it up later. When you're dismantling a guitar like this, it's a really good idea to have some kind of little receptacle, like a takeaway container, plastic one, not a, a used cardboard one, if you happen to be watching in America. Uh, label it up so you know which parts go with which guitar, and you should be absolutely fine. Okay. I'm going to desolder these capacitors because they're valuable and useful. Ditto the uh, cloth wire. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to desolder these. And then we can uh, get the pick guard completely stripped and then back on the guitar. Okay, well, let's have a look at these uh, three pickups and measure them on the multimeter. Let's go with this uh, 70s one first. If I put the uh, probes on the strands of the solder joints. Ooh, 7.43. 7.43 okay so that is quite a powerful little pickup that one um be interesting to see how that sounds if we look at the 
one that I pull out the middle position. Do the same thing again. 5.82K. So that's pretty much exactly in line with what I would expect from a pickup of this vintage, somewhere around about there. Not a particularly hot one. And lastly, the one with the slightly suspect coil. Oh, and this is 5.66. So the one I expected to be quite beefy is uh, the weakest of the three. Well, it's going to be really interesting to hear what these sound like. Uh, the plan is to uh, relic up some cloth wire, get the cloth wire onto, onto these, make them look as well, onto these two, make them look as authentic as possible. Uh, this one is going to have the um, plastic insulated wire as befits the, the vintage, its vintage. And uh, yeah, and then we've got to make a decision what's going to go where. And the only way to do that is to, to listen to them. So I'm quite excited about that. Okay, it looks like we've got three working pickups and that's a really, really positive sign. So we hope you enjoyed today's episode. Absolutely. Uh, we got a lot done. Um, we have a far clearer idea of what needs to be done. And I'm really, really encouraged by, you know, finding yeah. out that those pickups are probably still working. Yeah, fingers uh, so crossed. that's a big plus. So excited about that. Definitely. And uh, yeah, onwards and upwards. So what's in the next episode then? What are we going to do next? Oh, it's going to be a huge job. I've got to restore the fingerboard. And I've never seen a fingerboard in such bad condition and it's going to be so much work to do uh but here we go um it'll be worth it in the end hopefully i hope so I hope so brilliant okay well please hit subscribe leave us a comment we love reading your comments um share any information about any similar guitars you found and so on and we'll see you next time absolutely double hoi vaur